Okay, here we are sitting out in the Camden Road. It's been a very, very hot and sweaty day. Hot, 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 hot. Well, at least it's cooling down a little bit now. We're drinking water outside our favorite Caribbean restaurant in this part of the world. Yeah. It's been a momentous week for boxing and not all for good, I'm afraid. <clears throat> There's been two deaths in the ring this week. One on Tuesday and one today. And of course, Gillian White has been found to have been tested positively for two banned substances. Let's go on to the deaths first. The first was on Tuesday and it was a Russian called Maxim Dadishev against a Puerto Rican. Trainer Buddy McGirt implored the fighter, pull him out of the fight because he was taking too much of a beating in there. What's your take on that one, G-Man, having seen the tape? One of the things that you've got to understand as a coach, you do not negotiate with a fighter <laughs> in those circumstances. You make a decision. Maybe he's worried about being sacked. Fuck it. You can sack me if you want, but I'll save his life. You make the judgment, do not negotiate. You say to the ref, ref, finish. That's it. So Buddy McGurt had the right sentiments, but instead of just sitting there imploring his boxer and the boxer's cornermen, the other cornermen who were Russian, he should have just stopped it. Correct, as chief, as chief cornerman, he should say to the ref, ref, call the ref over, let the ref hear what he's saying. I'm stopping this fight now. This fight is stopping now. The other fight was in Buenos Aires between um, an Argentinian boxer called Hugo Santalan against a Uruguayan called Abra. And Hugo Santalan sustained a swelling to his brain and unfortunately passed away this morning at about 9 or 10 o'clock in local time. Well, you know, fighters are fighters. Fighters are warriors. They're never going to give up. They're never going to say, oh, oh, stop the fight. They're never going to say that. They're never going to say that's why they're fighters. That's why you have to make that decision for them. Because from a young age, they've been taught and learned, you've got to have this. This is what win fights, heart. This is what win fights, not skills, hearts, desires, desires. And you have to make, it's a tight, thin line. It's a very thin line. And that's why you have a corner man, to make that decision, to protect you from your desire. Okay. One second. Sorry about that folks, a technical adjustment. Okay, so it's been a, a terrible week for boxing um, in that regard. And then of course, it's now come out <coughs> in the last 24 hours to the public anyway, that Dillian White tested positively for two banned substances. Now I've checked on the substances and they're definitely on the ban list with UCAD. I'm not sure about VADA, that's the other doping agency. It's still to be confirmed via a second result. But what strikes me is that the Boxing Board of Control knew about this before the fight with Rivas on Saturday and did not inform Rivas or his team. What do you make of that, G-Man? Well, you know, it seems to me right now that in the last 10, 15 years, that drugs is a big time in boxing. I mean, this is not any big great surprise. The thing about it, what do you want? What do people want? Do they want, what do they want? Because no one is going to stop taking drugs because you're going to ban them for six months. What well, you got to do, the obstacle to put in that place that anyone get caught taking drugs, that all money that they earned will be taken back like criminal compensation. Otherwise, people aren't going to stop because they want to get that opportunity for that big fight for, to make that money. The Why public did... don't care about, the public don't care, apparently, about drugs. What the public cares about is seeing a good performance. And if drugs give them a, a good performance, they don't know, they don't understand. They only go by what the media tells them. They have no understanding about the dangers. But my question is, surely the Boxing Board, as the local commission, yeah. it was their obligation and their responsibility being the fact that they're meant to be the custodians of boxer safety, to have informed the Rivas camp that Dillian White had tested positive. Well, we don't know about that right now. There's speculation and allegation. No one is coming out and saying what well, we told Well, you. they haven't denied it. Robert Smith made a statement today. He hasn't denied it, that's for sure. 
What can he do? I know, if I was Reaver's camp, I'd be screaming and saying, listen, you know what, this wasn't a fair situation. But well, we have to wait until when all the stuff has gone through and this and that, and all the, that they come to some conclusion. But if I was in a reverse camp, I'd be saying, listen, you lot put me at risk, my health at risk. I could lose my life inside of there. Of course, you can't at the beginning. It wasn't just about drugs. But you've got to have protocol. You've got to have rules. You've got to have laws. Otherwise, <coughs> it's free for all. People will come inside there with a gun, calling it a boxing glove. You know, we've got to... It's a sad day for boxing. It's not just hot, it's a fucking sad day for boxing. It is a sad day. And of course, uh, Artur Spilka, who got knocked out by Derek Chisora in the second round, he's now trying to get in on the act, <laughs> saying that Chisora's got to be tested as well. You know, trying to make out that he got knocked out by Derek Chisora because of drugs. I mean, I think that's a bit too much from that from him, isn't it? I mean, he got he got he really poleaxed. I mean, let's face it. I mean, Derek Derek now is a big superstar now because he's knocking people out. You know, before he used to box, box, box. Now he's understanding now it's a fight. So he goes in there and he's taking him out. Good luck to him. Good luck to him. Well, the heavyweight division has really been shaken up. Of course, we've got to talk about uh, David Price versus Dave Allen. Now, I mean, I couldn't get over how ineffectual Allen actually was. You know, on this channel, we talked about David Price, what he was lacking. Not boxing ability, what he lacked was lacking was confidence. And what does Allen do? Dave Allen goes and give him confidence. Hello, Dave, I'm palling him up. So therefore, he's got no demons. That's where he get the confidence from. Because there's no demons in going into the fight. Everything is sweet and lovely. He's not, there's no demons. Alan definitely chummed him up. Oh yeah. I mean, Alan got stopped rightly so by his corner because he was taking a, a, you know, a consistent beating over the rounds. A good victory for Price. But I mean, where does Alan go from here? Does he like boxing? I mean, it's, a, you know, his performance was very bizarre to say the least. His whole attitude was bizarre. I don't think that he think this is a stroll in the park. He think that hype was going to get him through. You know, it was the same with, with Gorman. I was very disappointed with Gorman. Really disappointed with Gorman. Because Gorman went in there and the first two minutes in the fight, when it comes to back into the fight, I'm saying, I'm getting ready now to see a really good fight because he's got some tools. The tools he has was skill. What he didn't have was heart and desire. That's why after the first round, all he wanted to do was to come out and and start boxing, keep it long, keep it long. He didn't want to engage in a fight, but when he engaged in a fight, he looked like he looked amazing. He gassed, and when he gassed, the heart went. He packed out. He wanted to get back to boxing. It's always that getting back to boxing, but it's been a you know a quite stupefyingly incredible couple of weeks in in the world of heavyweight boxing and boxing generally. Um, just a quickie, uh, Yuzik. Yuzik was at the show last week. Um, now, where does he fit into this galvanized heavyweight division? Where, where does this six foot three Ukrainian cruiserweight fit into the heavyweight picture? Because he's now made that move, well, but he ain't had his first fight yet. Well, you know, you know, you can put your bottom line as that. He's feeling just like he's Limachenko. That's how he feels right now. Well, they were together at the show. There you go. They I weren't there. They, you no, weren't I there. Can, but can you see why? They were together at the you show can, and you, they did not leave each other's side. You can see why? You can see why? Because if no one is there, they're willing to bomb them out, they're going to go down, pop shot and play around like that. You're not willing to bomb them out. Okay, so on that note, in a nutshell, on a note, Lomachenko versus Luke Campbell. I was going to think about a draw. A draw? That's what I was thinking about. I was okay. going to think about a draw. And then I realised we were talking about Luke Campbell. Yes, we are. Well, it can't be a draw, can it? Well, not in my opinion. <laughs> well, on that note, it's been a very sad week for boxing with two deaths and the drug scandal. But at the end of the day, the sport still rolls on. This is edition number 12. Thank you from the G-Man. Look forward to seeing you all next week.